Quanta from Audio Damage is a plugin that's hyper focused on the task of granular synthesis. If you aren't familiar with granular synthesis, it's simply a way of taking a sample and playing back very tiny windows of that sample. And then you can determine um, the pitch and distribution of all of those little tiny subsamples of your sample. So, a quick demonstration here is. Uh, scanning through a simple voice file. That's that's true, and it and it is what what it, what it is, is. But that doesn't mean we aren't doing everything we can. It's under control as much as you can control it. Pull it, pull it, pull it. So it's just playing back little tiny windows, and until I move my finger, it doesn't advance to the next window. So uh, already we've seen one use of. Um, MPE control on the vertical gesture for going through the file. And let's just try and take a look at a chord. So it quickly dissolves into nonsense and texture. And that's one of the great things about granular synthesis is its ability to create texture. So how do we put that under control of MPE? And what are some of the quick and interesting things we can do in Quanta? Quanta is great because it just gives you a quick view of the sample. It's not terribly uh, literal or hyper precise because it just kind of you need to get a range of where you are and you get an idea of what is being played back. Um, and then it just gives you an oscillator, noise, some control over the grains, a filter and output. There's not a bunch of effects and a bunch of different mixed types of synthesis in it. The controls are, of course, a lot of modulation. There's several envelope generators with different uh, types and modes. And then there are some LFOs and sample and hold that you can apply. And then a matrix where you put everything together. So it's very clear as far as like what goes on. You can also quickly access things. So if you wanted to uh, change the position um, or the shape according to uh, the, the matrix, you can just turn a knob and then it quickly highlights that parameter in the matrix. And then you can just add amounts to it. Um, then the, the automated envelope generators and LFOs are on the left, and then all of your MIDI controls are on the right. Uh, so it makes it very quick and easy. The, what you will want to do when you're setting it up is go to the settings first and turn on MPE MIDI input mode. Um, and then again, like most of these MPE things we've seen before, uh, there's a pitch bend override, so you can customize that in the plugin per instance. Um, and then after touch smoothing, um, some controllers are happier with that. With the morph, I tend to not use it too much, maybe only a little bit. Um, and then of course, people really appreciate you can uh, load different uh, tunings. So it's not strictly um, a piano type Western tuning. You can uh, use uh, Scala files, I believe, and load different tables. Um, and then you can save those settings as a default, which you may want to if you're always going to be using it as MPE. Uh, Preset-wise, the factory has several presets, um, and they're all a lot of them are quite interesting. Some of them probably have MPE baked in, I don't know. Um, but we'll go ahead and go through this uh, in a stepwise fashion to show you how to do that. There's also some really great presets from our friends at Sonal System, um, the strong granular, and these have lots of different pads and uh, presets for, uh, you know, sort of different moods. Um, so back to the simple sort of voice preset that we have, um, we can start adding some MP control in the matrix. And again, we can see it's very simple. The grain position, I've already done that with CC74. And we can do some grain length tuning with um, maybe with the same with that pressure, that same gesture. So it kind of gets more chaotic as you advance through the sample. We can add a grain random to the pressure and the after touch, that's AT. They are true. And grain uh, tune randomness, which is kind of an interesting one. And again, we can add that to And now we've got sort of like a buzzing bees from a, a simple voice sample. 
And then what's really cool about Quanta is that when you want to load a sample, um, you can just go ahead to the, you know, finder and just drag in whatever uh, samples you want. So now we'll have something very different. And we're getting a lot of clicks because of the shape. We might want to change that to something a little bit smoother. And, uh, and so on. So you can, you know, already we have a very different feeling just by loading a different sample. So it's actually quite simple. Uh, and again, you can add a filter. There's two filters and you can run them in uh, serial or parallel. Um, we can take a listen to what that sounds like really quickly. Um, we'll add a lot of resonance because I kind of like that when we're working with these things, especially on the pressure. Um, so we'll go to the matrix and just move our graphic here and that'll take us to the frequency. Um, I'll put that on aftertouch. With Quanta, again, it's hyper-focused. You can really just kind of mess around with these presets. The presets um, work across uh, your different installations because it saves the uh, file with the preset. So if you want to move this to your iOS uh, version of Quanta, you can easily do that. And so, yeah, I, do, I don't want to go too, into the, too much into granular sound design here. I mostly just want to focus on using MPE and how to set it up. And, and then where you can apply that and get different sounds. Um, some of these different presets have very radically different. Very different levels of expression. Um, so they're really uh, easy to manipulate. The... Uh, I can't say enough about the matrix in this. That's really given me a lot of freedom to explore different aspects of uh, granular synthesis. So because it's simple, because it's hyper-focused, this is a short video and it's very easy to get running with Quanta. Definitely an essential part of any synthesis toolkit because it does give you a very focused control.